Hi everyone, my name is Sammy Glonick and I'm so excited to talk to you a little bit about duplicating diamond leadership. This is something that I feel like I really struggled with for a really long time in this business, trying to get my coaches to do what I did, trying to get them to kind of match my efforts and my excitement for this business. And what I realized is that leadership is very much into two categories, onboarding people who want to work the business and mentoring those who you already have. And so I think we all know that leadership starts with belief in ourselves. It kind of comes into consistency, showing up daily. But what I realized is that it's more than that. It's evaluating who you have coming into your network that really wants to run with you. It's those people that just fire you up because they're even more excited about the business than you are. It's about spending time with those people that you have, mentoring them, educating them, helping them grow in their con consistency and their confidence and helping them figure out what's next for them. Because I've realized that with my sister, Jamie Innes, she's my upline. She helped me see the vision before I saw the vision for myself. And so I wanted to really grow this business in a way that she helped me figuring out where my people were and who those people are that I already had. And so I realized that I was spending so much time either focusing on onboarding, bringing on new people, bringing on new energy, bringing on these people that were going to fire me back up that I kind of forgot about the mentoring spot. And then I went into a 180 and I spent so much time mentoring the people that I had, beating a dead horse, being like, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. And they weren't matching my efforts. And I realized that I needed to kind of take a step back and focus on, who were the people I needed to bring on and how much time can I spend with them to get them to the next level rather than just going 100% zero, 100% of the other way back to zero. And so number one, part one is recruiting more working coaches. I think we all know that we need to be talking about coaching on social media, talking about it. But also what I realized is that when I would talk about coaching, you could hear my insecurity about it you could hear that I didn't think I could be a good leader. So when I went on social media, it very much felt forced that I didn't really understand how to talk about coaching. I would talk about my challenge groups. I would talk about the exciting things, but my energy didn't match what I was putting down on paper. So because of that, I felt very insecure talking about it on social media. People gravitate towards excitement. They gravitate towards growth. So if they don't feel confident that you are going to be a good leader for them, they're going to find someone else. And so if you were to look at my Instagram three years ago versus today, it's not necessarily because my rank changed. It's because my excitement changed. Everybody has to recruit that first diamond coach. You guys are in this group because you are able to recruit multiple people that get to diamond. So if I could harness that energy that got me to five star, that got me to six star to seven star and so on, that was going to bring on more people because setting the pace for those people that are coming in is what's going to get them to the next level. If I am going to choose someone on social media to be my coach, someone that I don't know, I want this person to be confident. Someone that's going to show me leadership, not necessarily someone because of a specific rank. And I needed to remind myself of that when I was projecting myself on social media. When I am onboarding these new coaches, I let them know right away, diamond is a step. It is no longer a milestone. It is exciting and it is some, something to celebrate, but I used to stress that diamond was this huge milestone worth celebrating. And when my new coaches were onboarded, that's what they heard, that's all they knew. And so they looked at these 12 people that they needed to onboard as a milestone. And when they got to diamond, they clapped their hands and they stopped working because that was the goal rather than looking at it as a step in the right direction. So then I kind of took a step back and realized, all right, mentoring. This is the thing that I feel like I struggled the most at. I could get people in, but people weren't doing things. And so I started figuring out what I could do to mentor my coaches to the next level of diamond and beyond. And so the number one thing that has changed for me is I started doing coach pods or coach groups. And I had heard coaches talk about them, but I didn't know if that was really going to be for me, but I did it. I love it. I will continue to do it for a very long time. And so I separate my coaches based on Emerald, almost diamond, almost diamond. I consider to be six active coaches or more.
a diamond pod and a star diamond pod. And every time they rank advanced, they get graduated out of that said pod into the next one. They know that they're going to do this because I shout them out in the chat. Every single week I'm posting team calls. I'm able to talk to them at different levels of the business, which is super helpful. And for my new coaches, they know that if they want a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time with me or group and mentoring time with me, they need to get to Emerald minimum in order to get into these pods to collaborate with other people. They're all ran through Facebook Messenger and they're also reevaluated every quarter of the year because I realized that I was spending so much time with these people that had dropped rank that I didn't really even categorize people as leaders or non-leaders because I didn't even know if someone was once a diamond, but they're no longer a diamond. Did I consider them a leader? My actions and my belief did not add up because I would say they were a leader, but they were all the way down to coach rank. That was a problem for me. So this way I'm able to kind of categorize these coaches based on their efforts of their rank. They graduated up throughout each quarter and then I am able to remove them every quarter of the year. So if someone is a diamond and they fall to emerald, they get put in the emerald pod at Q3. Same thing with Q4, we reevaluate them, again, graduating up or down based on their rank. And then I also make sure that my business builders every week see my face, whether that means we are jumping on a one-on-one -on -one call, whether we are doing the team call, or we are having an open chat. Open chat for me is kind of where I'm able to just jump on Zoom for an hour and my coaches can ask me any questions that they want. The next thing I do is an emerald brainstorm. For me, this has something that I used as an open chat, but a leveled up version of it. And so every week on Zoom, Tuesday nights, my coaches know that if they are emerald or above, they are able to jump on this Zoom for an hour. I get one of my diamond coaches to co-host with me, which if maybe you don't have that many diamond coaches, maybe you get another emerald co-host or maybe someone else in the network, but just someone to kind of bring in some new ideas. And every week the topic changes and it's based on whatever my coaches are struggling with at that time. For example, when my team had a bunch of rank advancements one week, that week we talked about comparisons and we were able to nip it in the butt before it kind of took took precedent of what they were feeling currently. Other weeks, maybe we talk about team cycle bonus and what it means to feel like a diamond coach and what you're actually getting paid. Another week, maybe it's something else, but it's always just things that they're struggling with. And I get a co-host where we throw out a topic out there, we both talk about it, and then these emeralds and above are able to ask any questions that they want. It has been such an amazing brainstorm and they feel like leaders jumping on these exclusive Zooms. Also, I think it's important to note that my diamond coaches are able to add their one emerald or, you know, they get to choose an emerald in their downline to jump on that call each week. And it's based on the topic. So they're able to strategically choose which emerald that they might be struggling with that topic at that time and invite them to that call. And it's been an amazing brainstorm. Another thing I love to do every probably two to three months is a diamond internship. If you guys have heard Rob Pearson's team or national makeup call on this, he spoke a little bit more about it. I kind of used that. He's my uplines upline and made it my own, but my diamond internships have popped so many people in the last couple of years. Really. I started doing them about two years ago and it is a month long push group. This month long push group is for about four to six coaches at a time that are emerald and above. They are a good applicant would be someone who has four active coaches and is consistently hitting success club. For me, I like to have a little bit stronger emerald in there, but I have done it where they have two coaches and push for diamond in that month. But their goal is to hit diamond that subsequent months. We are doing the things during that month that are going to set them up for their business in the future. There is an application to apply. In that application, it's anything about, you know, what are your success club numbers the last couple of months? Why do you feel like you should be in this internship? What business hours are you currently working right now? And what are you doing during those hours? Just trying to figure out who these people are that are ready to level up in their business and in this internship. This is the only thing that I utilize for my entire downline. And so coaches, coaches can apply. And I just strategically choose four to six people that I feel like are ready for this internship. We do a tracker check-in every single day. They know that they're going to get removed if they're not checking in with their trackers. I want people that are ready to level up. And this is a really good way to kind of see who in my downline are people that are going to be the next leaders. Or if maybe you have a diamond coach that is banking on this coach to help rank advance them and maybe that coach isn't putting in the effort, you're able to have that hard and honest conversation that this person 
at this time is just not ready to maybe hit diamond and beyond. And it has just been such a good kind of flow in my downline of getting people to the next level. I also do extra trainings in this internship. Things like why two star? Because I think a lot of people talk about what two star, but they don't necessarily know why. So I talk about that. I show them, I break down team cycle bonus, what to put in a team page. My diamonds who are consistent are always putting things in team pages, but coaches that are Emerald and beyond, they might not even have a team page. So I get them to start that and kind of consistently put stuff in it. How to mentor their coaches. I think this is so important for them to note because that first few days and first few weeks as a coach, they just don't necessarily know how to mentor. And I'm able to help give them some tips so they feel a little confident. And then creating duplication in the downline. Maybe I host a call to help their coaches get to Emerald. Maybe I kind of break down why I hit Emerald, so on and so forth. But just getting them to kind of see the bigger picture as to what's beyond Diamond, not just Diamond being the milestone. And then I also put them in a Facebook messenger pod by themselves to kind of brainstorm throughout the month, asking, you know, what to say in an invite, how to invite a friend to coaching, so on. And it's just a really great collaboration because those girls are pushing to the same rank together and always just cheering each other on along the way. And the last thing that I reevaluated this year, which has been hands down one of the biggest epiphanies I've ever had as a coach, I looked at my sister and my sister, Jamie and Steve, her husband, are so amazing at creating duplication in their downline. My sister usually has minimum of five elite coaches and those elite coaches usually have elite coaches. And I, I kept, I'm an analyzer. So I always looked at them as this gold standard, but really this year I sat down and said, what do they do differently? And what they do differently is they recreate relationships with coaches who have been around for a really long time. And so, like I said, I spent so much time onboarding, so much onboarding, because I think we hear all the time, bring on new people, bring on fresh blood, bring on all these people that are going to build a business. And I agree, but I also agree with mentoring the people that you have. And I actually had two coaches hit diamond this year. One signed up in 2017, one signed up in 2016. They have been around consistently for years. And I was able to give them a little bit more quality time because I watched Jamie and Steve do this with so many people in their downline. And if I look back and when I pushed a diamond, I can't say that I would have been the go-getter. I wouldn't have been the person that just showed up and taught myself. Jamie, probably because she's my sister, gave me a lot more TLC. She was able to really mentor me and I didn't feel like I was just swimming alone. And so people, maybe you have diamond coaches that fell Maybe you have Emerald coaches who have been stuck at Emerald for a really long time. Maybe you have just coaches that you see so much belief in. And so what they taught me was I started watching my PS coaches. Who's showing up on team calls? Who wants this, but just isn't having the success? What's not clicking? And so I was able to choose about two to three people a month and pour back belief into these people and kind of going on a second date with them, giving them another chance to really see success. Because at that point, if they're not willing to meet me halfway, then I know that they might not be ready for this business. But if I am able to consciously spend more time with these people and reevaluate what's going wrong, maybe there's something to that. So a couple of people that I had mentored had been around for years, like those two girls I was just telling you. One of them revamped her entire Instagram in a week went from two, barely two active coaches to almost diamond within a month. Another coach went from four active coaches to hitting diamond three weeks later. And I asked both of them, what was the difference maker? And they said, you poured belief back into me. I was struggling because I was watching all of these people succeed. And I started to doubt myself every day that I didn't know if I could do it. But because you chose me to spend this extra time with, that made the difference. I gave these people a second and third chance, maybe not 10,000 chances, because I do think that if we spend so much time mentoring and you're just beating a dead horse and they're not ready to meet you halfway, that's where you need to go back into the onboarding platform. But I think it's so important to reevaluate who's sitting at your table already. These people were sitting at my table and I was so focused on bringing on new people that I forgot these people were already here. And so I gave them one to two tasks 
every three days, holding them accountable, checking in with them, making a note in my planner that I have to check in with Sam, I have to check in with Sarah. I want to see how they've revamped their Instagram since the last couple of tasks. And yes, there were a couple people that I gave a second date to and they didn't necessarily step up and that's okay. I was able to bless and release at that moment. And so when I hear bless and release, I truly think bless and release sometimes. Maybe spend a little bit more time. See if that person is your person. Maybe not spend all my time trying to push this person who's not ready to be pushed, but to reevaluate the people that were already there wanting my help, wanting the time to push their business forward. So those are my best tips. I think sometimes I just need to reevaluate and maybe you do too, kind of figuring out which bucket you're focusing too much on of onboarding and mentoring and asking yourself, have I been blessing releasing too little or too much? Or can I really give myself, am I blessing releasing sometimes?